Duncan Jim Frazier, Steel City Sports World. I'm here with somebody that don't need an introduction anywhere over. She's the current Miss Allegheny County. She's going for uh, Miss Pennsylvania, and I'll let her introduce herself and tell all her fans about who she is and what she does. Hi guys, as you remember, my name is Sindel Taylor and I'm your current Mrs. Allegheny County 2016. I'm currently in the running for Mrs. Pennsylvania America 2016 and I hope to bring home the win to the Still Cities Pittsburgh. All right, thanks Sindel. Hey, we're here at Wolfpack Boxing. This is a great um, venue, one of the best boxing gyms in the whole country, if not the whole world, and it's the second of uh, the Golden Glove Tournament, second week. We're looking forward to some great fights. I want to thank Luther Dupree and PCTV, Channel 21, for having us tonight. We'll be right back at you. Don't turn that down. Welcome to the Left Park Arena. Let's get a round of applause to Jeff Lee T, the owner of the Left Park Gym, everybody. We also want to thank DJ Dave, right on the, on the uh, DJ tonight. I'm going to give you some entertainment while we're getting everything prepared for you for our boxing venue. We also like to thank Tom Copa for, and Tyler Water Company for the water for the boxers and the officials. We're also selling Golden Gloves t-shirts. They are starting at $12. And of course the 50-50 raffle will be coming around. Please support the kids. Bless for Pennsylvania, Police Athletic League, Jim Savinic, Head of Officials, Gloria Stokowski, John Flanagan. A round of applause for everybody. Thank you very much for attending today. Are you ready? Are you ready? Pittsburgh, look back. We'll be announcing the fighters in just a few short minutes, so thank you very much for your patience. DJ Day. From the Mrs. Allegheny and Pennsylvania American, Mrs. Sindel Taylor. Everybody, round of applause. I'm here with Bernard. Bernard, Bernard. Sindel Taylor. She will be running for Miss, Mrs. Pennsylvania very shortly here, so come out and support Sindel Taylor. Everybody, Sindel Taylor. Thank you. that are fighting this evening here so you can understand who they are and support them in their future enterprises. Made. That is how you were made. You don't break easily. These men 
Here, turn and face your audience, man. Look at them. Let's hear a great old <laughs> Smoking Jim Frazier, Steel City Sports World. I'm here with uh, the one and only Sendell Barnes. And Sendell, we got the 125 pounders up there. Absolutely, they're looking good. They came out of the corner clean. They're fighting, staying in the middle of the ring, which is what I like to see. You know, I like to see a lot of action. So I think they're doing really well right now. And uh, Chauvel versus uh, Brody White. Con Grab Boxing versus Steel City Boxing. been some movies made here in this building. Uh, Jeff Mucci does a good job with uh, Wolfpack Boxing. And it's a great way for people to uh, learn how to do self-defense and stay in shape at the same time here at Wolfpack Boxing in Carnegie, PA. Look like the one fighter got red, white, and blue socks on there. That's always an advantage. Absolutely. Absolutely. Always got to have in support. And uh, Sendell, when is the Miss um, Pennsylvania uh, pageant? 
Um, the Miss Pennsylvania America pageant is going to be June 18th in Philadelphia. It's at the Theater of the Arts, uh, the University of the Arts building. I'm and, really and, who, and who's going to be there? Um, Smoke and Jim Frazier better be there. I'm hoping maybe Luther will might make it out as well. Uh, and hopefully, you know, I get a lot of fans from Allegheny County coming out and support. Get some terrible towels in the, in the, in the way. All right, sounds good. This fight's a little too close to call. Brody's putting the pressure on. Aiden is a tough kid throwing some combinations. Second round, too close to call. Both of them got some great corners. Hundred and twenty five pound intermediate. It depends what the the judges like. Uh, Brody White is the aggressor. But Aiden throwing some very good combinations when he comes in. Ooh, and Aiden got a good right hand. Anytime you measure your opponent with that left, you know you got some uh, some power in that right hand. Aiden just nailed uh, Brody White with the right hand coming in. Brody needs to just move his head a little bit. Nice overhand right by Brody. Oh, he's having a hard time getting away from Aiden's right hand. And, and, and Aiden throws a lot of combinations. So Brody got to be careful that he don't get a nosebleed in there. Aiden's hitting him with some clean punches. You don't have to worry about Aiden's jab. It's that right hand. Right hand hurt Brody a little bit, but Brody keeps coming. Brody White keeps coming. He's forcing the action. It's going to be a very tough fight for the judges to score. Brody's very aggressive. Oh, both of them. Brody landed the left hook, and Aiden landed the right hand. Very close fight. Third and final round. Aiden and Brody Wright. Last week the red corner won every single fight. But uh, this week you got some great, great fighters in the blue corner. Looking down the list. Again, I'd like to thank Luther Dupree and PCTV21 for having us here tonight. Televise all the great action. Wow, what a right hand. Woo. And the combinations, Woo. Brody got hurt, Aiden, that right hand is so strong. Oh, he did a 360. Woo, dancing with the stars in there. They do it all at Con Grab Boxing. Brody got those shiny black shoes. Red, white, and blue socks. That will affect the judges. Hard to vote against a man in red, white, and blue socks. And again, Aiden has uh, a picture of uh, Harry Grab and Billy Carr on the set. And here comes Brody stepping up to action. 
body in the head. It might have been enough to win the fight. Brody, the relentless Brody White. What a great name for a boxer. Brody White is chasing Aiden all over the ring. Right, here we go, Sendell knockout artist Matthew uh, Kearns from uh, Ray Schaefer Boxing. This guy's unbelievable power. Looks like a movie star, but he got knockout power fighting against Charlie Stanley Wolfpack Boxing. Ooh, see that right hand? Matt is unbelievable. I've never seen anybody go the distance with Matt. Very dedicated, listens to his coach, Jose Carabello, which is unusual for a fighter. Put me in the mind of an undefeated professional fighter by the name of Josh Hitman Hines, the handsome hitman that is undefeated in the former state of Pennsylvania Golden Glove champion. That's who Matt reminds me of. Charlie got a good build for a fighter. I'm not sure anybody can handle Matt's power, that right hand is devastating. Matt's a little aggressive. A lot of times, Sindel, um, you, you lose a lot of energy when you miss a shot and when you throw power punches, so. so. Charlie looked like he's in great condition. Wolfpack fighters are in great shape. This is a 165 weight pound weight class. I bet you can tell the difference in the size of the fighters between the first and second fight. You absolutely can. You can tell the difference in the size of the fighters. You can also tell the difference in the experience that they have when they're fighting. Um, not as to say that the younger fighters aren't necessarily as experienced, but you can see that the techniques go a little bit different into a different weight class. Um, you can see that they're a little bit more hungry uh, right now, that these two fighters, when they first came out, they were ferocious, they were fierce. I saw the look on each other's eyes. When they locked eyes, they were ready to go. Excellent observation, Sindel. Second round left out. Matt won the, won the first round. Still a, still a sub novice. Charlie's very aggressive. Matt got to be careful he don't punch himself out. Because not too many people went past round one with Matthew. 
I like the movement. Charlie doing a good job of smothering Matt's power, staying on the inside. Matt really can't uh, get it, get his shots off like he likes to. Doing enough to win the fight, win the rounds very easily. But he got to be careful. You're here at the uh, Wolfpack Boxing Club, and you're fighting a Wolfpack fighter. Matt should throw that jab a little bit more. That'll set up the right hand for him. That'll keep Charlie on a little bit because if you don't throw a jab, there's nothing that'll keep Charlie off you and he smother Matt's power. Look like a little head butt. Charlie hitting on the hips as well. That'll throw a fighter down. Nice, Charlie's hurt. Ooh, what a shot by Matt. Charlie's hurt, he's holding on. Let's see if he can recuperate. He was definitely hurt, his knees buckled. Matt got exceptional, exceptional power. All right, here we are, third and final round. Subbing off as 165 pounders. Matt is undefeated with all knockouts, but uh, Charlie Stanley looked like he may um, be a guy that can go to distance here. He has determination to go to distance. He tasted uh, Matthew's uh, power and was able to survive up until this point. Nice right hand. Double right hand by Charlie Stanley. Right now, both fighters are probably tired. They're just fighting on heart and guts and courage. You'd be surprised how a three round fight can, can take it out of you. But it can because you're using everything, your legs, your hips, your, your abs, your, your shoulders, your legs. And you have to survive all the punches that you have to absorb. Great um, coaching uh, by uh, Wolfpack because uh, Charlie Stanley, even though he's losing the fight, in my opinion, nice combination by Matt, but he's able to smother Matt's power for the most part. He's not at the end of the punches. Matt's trying to close the deal, but it's only about five seconds to go. Charlie did a nice job of going to the body. Great fight. What you think of that fight, Sindel? I think it was an amazing fight. It's a little too hard for me to call. You know, I'm still learning uh, how to judge all these things. I think both fighters did great, especially for, you know, the name that you told me about the guy in the red corner having knockouts. This guy went the distance over here in the blue corner. Uh, so definitely got to give him some credit for that, going the, go the distance. So definitely respect that. All right, great job. Let's hear one more time, ladies and gentlemen, from Matthew Cordes and Charlie Stanley. Stanley. Great fight. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, your decision on points. Fighting out of the red corner, Matthew Cordes.
Nice place. It's, it's like a little war house up here, you know. <laughs> Thunderdome. We did white collar ballers in here, right? Yeah, long time ago. It was fun. <laughs> you know what? Uh, well, real good. Hey, where's the mouth at tonight? He had uh, something to do, I guess. Okay, <laughs> I get it. <laughs> All right, here you go. Smoking Jim Frazier, Still City Sports World. I'm here with one of the best 165 pound guys I've ever seen. Hey Matt, please tell everybody, all your fans, your name and where you, what gym you box out of. Matthew Kearns, Ray Shavers Boxing Association. And I tell you what, I always say you should be in Hollywood instead of boxing, but I've never seen anybody go the distance with you. You had the guy hurt, but he was pretty tough. Yeah, 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 I need to run more. <laughs> I need to run more. Did you did you get tired at all? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I need I need to run more. Okay, you look great, man. That's the first time I've ever seen anybody go the distance, so he must got an iron jaw. When's your next fight? Uh, I'm not sure yet. All right. Say hi to Sendell. So I guess he did get tired, Sendell. He didn't look it. No, he definitely didn't look tired. Um, you know, you could definitely see the determination in his eyes. So I'm checking out this next fight already, you know. You know me, I like action. So whenever I hear the crowd go, that means there's action. So I'm excited to see what these two fighters do. I kind of like that they're a little bit less low-key and not so flashy in their outfits. Sometimes I like that. Sometimes that means to me you're still in that, that beginning stages. You're still going up for that. So I'm really excited to see what these fighters bring. Great job, Sindel. Uh-oh. Luther the Prey's in trouble up there They're in Luther's corner. Mason Bowers from uh, Pittsburgh Boxing, Mount Washington, versus John Dennis from Upper St. Clair, 141 pounders. Both of these boys are from Allegheny County. Uh, Mount Washington might be just outside Allegheny County. I'd have to see where he exactly where he's at. So I'm kind of hoping one of them wins. That kind of brings hope for my title. Uh, the blue corner right now, uh, I believe that's John Dennis, is looking real good. He's getting the guys going. He's getting the crowd going. Kind of taking Red Corner off of his stance right now. So I'm excited to see Red come back in the next round. All right, you heard from Sindel. Great observations. They seem to like Luther. They're in neutral corner all the time. Ten seconds to go. Look like a big round for Mason Bowers in the novice division. 
stand and eight count for John Dennis from Upper St. Clair. But long as he puts his hands up and walks to the referee, he won't stop it and the bell will ring before he can get hurt again. There it is. Coming up round two, round two. Oh, on the Golden Gloves and amateur boxing, you got to have your wife beater tucked into your trunks. Can't have your T-shirt hanging over, covering the belt. Referee needs to see for the low blows. So Mason Bowers, he'll learn that. Let's see if he can capitalize on the big 10-8 round that he had in the first round. Dennis has an excellent corner. Got Coach Brown and, and Teddy in his corner. And so he's just going to fight. Oh, he just got hit with a left hook high off the top of the head by Bowers. Bowers got some power shots. Most guys got it. Boy, most guys got a good right hand. That's a conventional fighter. But when you can throw a left hook off of that jab, oh, that's that's tough for a novice fighter to defend. And then when you have a tattoo also, ooh, you know you're tough when you have a tattoo. Now Bowers is really throwing some power shots. He's, uh, he's grunting when he throws his shots. Good left hook to the body. Well, Dennis did a good job pushing him off. I like Dennis's uniform. I like the colors. Uh, just got threw in a towel. His corner threw in a towel. His corner threw in a towel. Stopped the fight for his own good. Stopped the fight for his own good. Out of the blue corner, his opponent, out of the corn pad, Jim, 
Evan Billings. Billings. Come on, Jamie. Here we go, we got uh, Billings versus Robert from Mac Fitness. Tough kids. And Robert fought uh, last week. 152 pound sub novice. But Evans Billings, I tell you what, he's just going to fight. Look like there's just such a different size. Looks like uh, Robert is uh, a lot bigger than Evan Billings. Billings is tough. Wow, he got some uh, good movement. Did you just say that he's got size on him? Didn't you ever hear it? It's not the size of the fighter. It's about the fight, the size of the fight in the fighter. Yeah. Come on now. <laughs> you heard that from Sindel. That is so true. <laughs> oh, nice body shot. Look almost like David and Goliath in there. David is holding his own. Evan Billings doing a good job. Matt Fitness, Robert from Matt Fitness is a power puncher, but his, his mouth is wide open. Hand speed definitely goes to Evan Billings. And uh, he's a boxer with some power. Got a lot of heart. Drops his hands, which uh, he may get warned about that. Judges frown on that, but uh, he's a good showman. I like his uh, ring generalship. A very close round. Too close to call. All right, round number two. Close, too close to call. What do you think of that first round, Sendell? Honestly, they are both fighting a good fight. Um, like I said before, I'm, I'm really interested. I'm watching this fight because they're putting on a great fight. I always talk about the person, the people in the ring. You know, you can never judge a book by its cover. So I'm just kind of waiting to see what the judges are scoring. All right, you heard it from Miss Allegheny County, America. Sandell Taylor, my favorite. Right there, see? Oh, thank you, Miss. And one time, Sendell Luther Dupree won three weeks in a row a couple years back. He was hot. <laughs> they thought it was rigged. But you may be wasting your time because I've never won. But <laughs> so, Oh, rubbing it for good luck. Thank you, Sendell. A lot of times it comes down to conditioning. Who can have the stamina for three rounds? You heard the great Matthew Kern say that uh, he ran out of gas a little bit, and he's an experienced fighter, so. It's all about the road work, even in the wintertime. What do you do to stay fit, Sindel? Actually, I was just talking about that. I'm so glad that we're here at Wolfpack Boxing. Um, as you know, my platform is heart health awareness. So I try to do a lot of cardio to keep healthy, but I have to be really careful. I wear a heart rate monitor on my wrist, but they say boxing is one of the best things for your heart. So, you know, I've definitely been looking at coming into this place. It's very close to my house. So now that I'm here, it just might be my next thing. All right, you heard that from Sendell Taylor. 
They... And son in the corner, Jose Carabella Jr., being trained by his dad, the Puerto Rican Prince, Jose Carabella, fighting Nate Johnson from Wolfpack Boxing. And I tell you what, this Carabella got a lot of uh, potential. I think he can be a pro one day. He's young, he's only a cadet, cadet fighter. That means you're under 16 years old. But you can see the skills already, Hunt Sendell. Absolutely, you can. Um, I think it's so respectful to see a father and son team out here. It's definitely also a little bit hard. You know, you have a lot more, I feel sometimes, more stigmatism to look up to because, you know, you're, you're living at home with your coach a little bit more. Um, so I love the fact that you can see the dynamic of this father and son team working in harmony. Um, it shows really great, great attitude. It's almost like when you step in this drawer, he's your coach. When you step outside of the door, he's your dad. <laughs> and I love that. A great call, great observation, Sindel. And especially when your dad's a living legend. Jose was a great amateur fighter, an outstanding professional fighter, and now he does a great job as a coach. He got his own gym over in uh, Sharpsburg, uh, Ray Schaefer's boxing. And he was the star, one of the stars in softball movie. He was uh, yeah, I Jay's, uh, Jay's trainer. What's Jay's name? Um, I'm not sure of Jay's name. Yeah. Um, I, I remember his face from being in there, you know, as a ring girl in the softball movie. So some of the fighters and some of the coaches that I see out every day now, you know, I recognize them from in there because they want real people to portray that. Um, and also, you know, with boxing being so dangerous in the ring, not only to mimic it, on, especially on TV, you know, you want somebody who's going to be safe inside and out. Mm -hmm. Great call. I thought Jose won the first round, but uh, Nate Johnson is a tough guy out of uh, Wolfpack Boxing. Jose with the hand speed. Many of those are scoring punches. But the judges don't like when you keep your hands down. I love it, though. When you got the ability, go ahead and do it.
Nice combination by Jose. Nate got a f lot of fans. Uh oh, looking like Muhammad Ali a little bit. Or Macho Camacho. What skills. Jose Carabelli's just so relaxed in there. He's tall with, with long arms. Perfect, perfect built for a fighter. Good looking guy with great athletic ability. Woo. Johnson throwing him pretty low. Maybe even threw an elbow there. So I, I don't think you'll see Jose going against the ropes again. That's Nate Johnson's opportunity. Another, another round for Jose Carabella. Third and final round, Nate Johnson, Wolfpack Boxing, in the future, the future. Guy has a chance to be maybe the best to ever come out of this area, and that's saying something. It's Jose Carabella Jr. from Race Schaefer Boxing. All he got to do is just be a little bit better than his dad, and he's already in the picture, one of the top 10 fighters ever in this area. That's where the Puerto Rican Prince was. One of the top 10 greatest fighters, pro and amateur, to ever fight out of the Pittsburgh area. Jose got to get off the ropes. That's Nate Johnson's only opportunity. And Nate Johnson, that's his only opportunity. And the guy is in shape. Nate Johnson is in great condition. Wow. Now Jose reversed him and he has Nate against the ropes. Jose got to keep throwing punches. It's going to be a, a close fight. I got Jose winning all three rounds, but you never know how the judges is going to score it. Nate Johnson got a lot of heart and courage, and this is his gym. Amante got it. Amante got it. He got his pitcher. See, Amante got his pitcher on the back of his jacket. I don't even know what to say about that. I kind of love it. You know, I have a very unique name, Sindel, so everything that I have to get, I have to get specially made. So I kind of feel like we have something in common. And he's also in the U.S. Navy. So he's a uh, he's a service veteran, and uh, he's doing that. He's doing he's pre currently in the Navy. So well, you know, my father was uh, retired from the Navy. He did receive uh, dis uh, honorable discharge, and you know, my husband is currently a military member. So you know that I support the military 100%. Um, I do a lot of projects with the Stand Up Stand Down organization, which supports military veterans. Um, so I definitely applaud him for that. You heard that from Sindel Taylor. And Sindel has a prior engagement tonight, so she'll be leaving right after this bout. But we we really enjoyed you, Sindel. You did an excellent job, and I can't wait to work with you in the future. Jim, thank you so much. I truly appreciate being able to come out tonight. Um, this boxing gym, Wolfpack Boxing, is truly amazing. The crowd is going wild. Um, I'm kind of loving this crowd right now. I'm so thankful to be here. Thank you to PCTV21, Luther Dupree up there. Uh, I definitely appreciate it. Thank you guys so very much for allowing me to be here tonight.
partnered up with us. We're going to try. We don't know if we can, but we, we believe that the key to stop the violence is with education. And we feel if we put a book in the kid's hand, they'll learn something and maybe it'll be a better world. And I want to thank all of you for helping to make a better world. And thank Judge Rossi. We want to come back here. Thank you. In the modest 178 pound division, fighting out of the red corner for the Pittsburgh Boxing 51, John the Crown with Jacquay. His opponent in the blue corner, unattached, Marcus Williamson. Williamson, come on, Jamie. Three, two, one. Jaquay versus Marcus Williamson. Jaquay, former MMA guy. Tough, very tough. Right now, the only thing Williamson can do is uh, cover up. Could be, just took a shot. Could be a stand and eight count. And Marcus Williams look like a got a great body for a fighter. Might be a little inexperienced. He's a novice fighter. He's a soft paw. And Jaquay's an action fighter, so maybe Williamson got to just get warmed up. A little tired. He just got hurt a little bit. Williamson's dead tired in there. And he and he's fighting next. This is a tough kid to fight your first fight. Jaquay's an MMA guy. He's just coming off a fight last week in Lawrenceville. We're uh, fought a very close uh, decision. Uh, loss against uh, Greg Rudolph. And Rudolph is an outstanding fighter. Maybe one of the best fighters in the state. And if he was even in the open division, Rudolph could be a pro. And, and Jaquay, and Jaquay uh, you know, went pretty much toe to toe with him. And uh, Williamson got a good corner. Um, you got uh, Nightmare Stallworth. You got uh, Rock Robinson. So he's gotten good instructions. Just in, just in there with a the guy with uh, too much uh, ring ex and cage experience. Guy trains hard. And if, if Marcus doesn't quit, he can be a good fighter. Um, a lot of times when you when you get beat this badly in your first fight, you give up. But uh, trust and believe, Jaquay is no uh, normal novice fighter. Got a lot of experience in MMA. Trains hard. Nice combination there by Williamson. And so Marcus is doing. Good. Nice body shot. Marcus just got to turn it into a street fight because that's uh, what Jaquay is going to do. And that's his only hope to go the distance. 
I think he's too far behind on points uh, to win the fight without a knockout. You're not going to knock out Chiquay. Chiquay's in there with Teddy and Meatball, so, you know, not only is he very well conditioned, he's, uh, he's a very school fighter. Also, you got Fran young Francisco screaming out instructions as well. Two, three minutes is a long time to be in there in combat. Ten seconds to go. Marcus got to let his hands go. There it is. Straight left. All right, just took one on the nose. Coming up, round three, round three. All right, third and final round. Uh, Marcus Williamson came out. You know, he's determined to win this fight. This could mean the difference between uh, Nice spin, very nice spin. Yeah. And sometimes a little extra rest can hurt. And uh, you can tell uh, Marcus is probably a weightlifter because he got a Gold's Gym t-shirt. Chiquay just missed with a big right hand. I'll tell you what, Marcus got some skills to work with. His headgear came loose again. Sometimes the dreadlocks will hold it down for you. <laughs> they, they won't come loose now. <laughs> Told you, Quay, don't do the Dougie. That's that George Foreman push right there. And it's a good fight. I tell you what, Marcus was not in there in his first fight with a stumble bump. If they don't fix it properly, the referee will take a point away for a defective headgear. Coach Rock is taking the gloves off. He's going to go in there raw, barehanded. <laughs> Jaquay is ready to attack. <laughs> Marcus did a good job. He ducked under that right hand in the last uh, round and a half. Um, he did a nice job. Didn't duck under that one. Nice uppercut. Ducked under that one good. So he got some skills. He's a good athlete. Uh-oh. Don't want to argue with the referee. Uh, Should have ducked that one, but... Jaquay, 10 seconds to go. Jaquay got him pretty good in his own corner. And it's going to be, I tell you what, Marcus did a great job. He went the distance. Outstanding fight.
Let's go for the finals, ladies and gentlemen. That was a great fight. Our sixth medal presenter out of PCTV, Channel 21, Smoking Jim Frazier, everybody, Smoking Jim. Dan Bodish is a tough guy, but the best amateur fighter I've ever seen, at least in the last 10, 15 years, is Cameron Eke. He's been in there with everybody. This is last year, fighting amateur, 19 years old, one of the Twin Towers. Got a great corner and Joe Board, gentleman Joe Board. And um, this is good experience for Bodish, so he's in there uh, with a guy that will be pro soon. Cameron be fighting in the uh, Donnie Brook, fighting against the best from Ireland. Fought in the Olympic trials also this summer, and he trains every day hard. Uh, got a great sparring partner about the same size. They call him the Twin Towers, Glenn Mitchell. And uh, Coach Joe Board brought uh, Cameron Ekis along right at the exact right pace for him um, nice right hand Bodus Bodus is tough he's a tough kid he usually puts on more pressure than this but uh, you can tell that right hand of Ekis affected him already nice body shot by Bodus and he's a fan favorite always brings a nice crowd just fought a couple of weeks ago on the south side. Won big in a landslide victory. Did you see that left uppercut by Cameron Ekis? There's a right uppercut. I mean, you, you can't get sparring partners. You can't simulate anything that Cameron Ekis does in practice, you know. So it's hard to get out of the way of a punch when a guy throws a lead left uppercut and puts uh, some mustard on it. Bodish is a tough kid. I would not have put my fighter in there with Cameron Ekis. It's a reason why it's difficult for him to get, get a fight. But this is the main event. It's an open division. And so... Uh, if, if Danny's dream is to be a Golden Glove champion, he has to go through guys like Cameron Ekis. And, but a Cameron Ekis only comes around about once every 20 years. 
remember the name. He's going to be an outstanding pro. He's serious about his craft. He works at his craft. He got the perfect trainer and Joe Board. Look, right uppercut. Wow. Wow. Nice right hand by Danny. Then he got caught with a combination. Danny's a tough kid. I hate to see him. Nice overhand right. Good job. All heart. I hate to see him in there with such a great fighter like Cameron Ekes. Joe Board always wears the best derbies in the corner. What a gentleman. Cameron Ekes is way ahead on points right now. And right now he wants to work on some things. Uh, I've never seen Bodish take a back step before. He's taken several tonight. But this is a good experience for him if he doesn't get hurt. That's what you got to worry about with a young fighter in there with a guy that's about a month or two away from turning pro. Lotus is a tough guy. But, uh, man, you're going you're gonna to get... Wow, that right hand. You know, you run in there too quick on Cameron Ekes. He's going to make you pay. He can drop you with one punch. That right hand is lethal. He can throw every combination you want off of that left hand as well, including a lead uppercut, which you rarely, rarely see in professional or amateur. Both fighters do. Nice right hand. Oh, Ink is just can turn his punches over. Oh my goodness. Look like Danny's might be bleeding a little bit through the mouth. But when you got a puncher that can a fighter that can turn his punches over, and he can take you out. I'm worried that Bodish is getting hit with too many clean punches. I'm looking as looking in his eyes, he's still the lights are still on. But, uh, man, Cameron Ekes is a uh, good body shot. Mm. I guess a fighter like Cameron Ekes, your only goal should be to go the distance. Go the distance. Like Rocky and, and Rocky won. Ooh. Danny just dropped a right hand. Cameron just dropped a right hand. Oh man, it was picture perfect. And one thing when you when you're taking a barrage of punches from a guy like Cameron Ekes, you're not moving as fast. Um, after a while, you just. You don't run in there as fast. You don't bob and weave as fast. You start missing badly. Wow. Good job. Another big round for Cameron Ekes. Third and final round. Oh, what a right hand. Danny almost went down from that right hand. Cameron turning it over. What a shot. He can't see it coming. It's so fast and it's so quick like a piston. Danny can't see it coming. And he blinds him with that left jab. Danny's on the inside fighting all hard. Got his mom cheering for him. And uh, Bodish is all hard. A lot of courage. I just, I just fear he'll get hurt in there. Look like Cameron Ekes is pulling back a bit. But if you make him mad, 
He knows he's way ahead. Mm. right hand Cameron Eagles was trying to pull back a little bit this round but uh, he just threw a hard uh, right hand on Bodish because Bodish was uh, starting to get a little bit too confident another right hand he'll pull back some he don't want to he don't want to hurt Danny there it is he's just doing enough to keep Danny off of him Let's see when Danny starts uh, bullying his way in there. And that's when Bolus comes back. I mean, uh, that's when Ekis comes back with a left hook or a hard right hand. Nice. Nice right hand. So glad to fight with a head gear. That head gear really protects the fighters. Cameron Ekes lost his mouthpiece. Well, that was a great move. I've never seen that before from a corner. Joe Board. Instead of putting water on the mouthpiece, he put water in the fighter's mouth. The Moist is at a knockdown or a slip. The referee is saying that it was a slip or a push. Nice right hand by Cameron Nikas. Oh, what a right uppercut. Oh, my goodness. What a beautiful right uppercut by Cameron Nikas. Bodish can take a punch. I don't think anybody else can beat Bodish in this weight class other than Cameron Ekes. Bodish is tough. All heart. What a great fight. What a great fight. Slide over, Lulu. That was a great fight. Let's hear it for the fighters, ladies and gentlemen. Out of the red corner. 